Greetings and welcome to the University of Minnesota Alumni Association's webinar series. My name is John Ruzek and I'm the Senior Director of Alumni Networks here at the U of M. Thank you to all alumni and friends who have made time to join us live today. Uh, during last year's webinar series, we heard consistent feedback from our viewers that networking is one of the most intimidating parts of the job search or career development process. So that's why we're bringing you today's webinar Say no to networking and yes to growing your network, a user's guide to intentional connecting. We think it's gonna be a great conversation today, so thanks again for joining us. Today's webinar is part of a free series being offered by the University of Minnesota Alumni Association where we're having conversations with experts about career, life, and learning topics. We'll be running monthly webinars from now uh, through May, and this is, webinar is being recorded and will be viewable afterwards at the uh, uh, web address that you see on the screen. So just give us a few business days to post it to our website. And for those of you who are on Twitter right now, uh, tweet at us with the hashtag UMNWebinar. We'd love to hear from you. And we've also listed some of our Twitter handles for the Alumni Association, our presenter Rashini today, and myself, if you're interested in connecting via Twitter. Uh, upcoming webinars uh, in a couple weeks. Uh, actually, I will be leading a webinar on making the most of LinkedIn, where we're going to spend most of the hour uh, taking audience questions about how uh, individuals can uh, get the most out of LinkedIn and hopefully show you a few uh, tips and tricks. And then also on November 19th, we'll have Holly Crawford uh, presenting on overcoming the imposter syndrome when you feel like a fraud in your work. Uh, an in-person event coming up here in Minneapolis on Monday, October 26th, uh, our next Emerging Professionals Network Social at Insight Brewing. Uh, registration details are at minnesotaalumni.org slash EPN. And uh, while it's not in-person networking, we will be doing our inaugural uh, virtual networking hour on November 5th at 12 noon and it's free to attend and it's all online and it's uh, online uh, speed networking basically where uh, alumni will identify by industry areas and exchange career knowledge and advice in a series of brief nine minute text-based chats. So if that's something of interest, uh, check out the registration details via the web address below. A few housekeeping items uh, regarding GoToWebinar. Uh, that I'd like to go over before we start. Uh, you have joined the presentation listening using your computer speaker system by default. So if you'd prefer to listen over the phone, just select telephone in the audio pane of your GoToWebinar panel and dial-in information will be displayed. If you experience audio difficulties while listening via your computer, this can be caused by having multiple software applications open, which can use up your computer's bandwidth and affect network performance. Also, if you're listening via wireless, that can also have an impact as well. If you have a question today, and we definitely will welcome them, uh, please submit them uh, in the questions pane on your GoToWebinar control panel. We'll be monitoring them along the way, and, and Rashini will also have a, a couple uh, moments where uh, she'll be taking questions, and so uh, feel free to chime in and, and make this a, a rich dialogue. It is now my pleasure to introduce our webinar speaker, Rashini Rajkumar, an executive coach, keynote speaker, and host of WCCO's radio's News and Views, and she's also the author of the book, Communicate That. She's the, brand, she's the personal brand columnist for the Twin Cities Business Magazine and is frequently asked to contribute to media around the country about powerful communication and executive presence in a variety of industries. Uh, Rashini is an alumna of the University of Minnesota Law School and also serves on the national board for the University of Minnesota uh, Alumni Association. And it is my great pleasure to welcome Rashini to the webinar today. Thanks so much, John, and thank you to all of you for joining us today. Your time is valuable, and I promise this will be a power-packed 56 minutes, and I will get you out on time by 1 o'clock. So we're going to get started, and uh, I want to start with a question, first of all. 
my question for you is what is your most common networking setting? And John has a few choices from which you can select. John? All right. What is your most common networking setting you often find yourself in? Business breakfasts, power lunches, happy hour events, fundraising galas, or professional conferences or workshops? Uh, so we'll take uh, about 10 seconds here to allow uh, those in attendance to uh, take the poll and uh, we'll show the results uh, here in about five seconds. So, okay, it looks like we got most of them, so. All right, some good questions. Some, oh, great, wonderful to see uh, the responses. Happy hour events, I'm a big fan of happy hours, so I'm glad to see that a lot of people are going to those. But professional conferences or workshops, this is absolutely not a surprise that 63% of all of you out there find yourself in this setting most commonly in your day-to-day -day jobs and life. All of these settings, though, have one thing in common. These are all situations where I want you to become more intentional. So what I have for you is the IAP formula. I'm going to teach it to you today, and I want you to start using it in any kind of setting, short duration, long duration. You can use this in emails, for your phone calls, any kind of in-person or recorded encounter. So what is the IAP? First off, the I stands for intent. Each of the letters in this IAP communication formula are co-equal, but the intent really, really drives it all. Second, audience analysis. What do you know about your audience who is going to be at that happy hour, at that networking event, at that fundraiser? Anything you can discern about your audience is so important. It's not a test. I'm not trying to give you unnecessary work, but I promise you, the more you know, you will become empowered to have much more powerful and productive and intentional sessions together. The P stands for powerful performance, not just performance, but powerful performance. I want you to intentionally make these short duration sessions, these conversations or long duration meetings that you have more powerful by really getting all these things in alignment. Let's break down the IAP formula for you. I have some hint questions, all right? So in with the who, with the intent line, uh, you want your intent, I call it the intent line, you want it to be very, I want to make sure everyone has their sound. Do we get that yep. strained out? Okay, good. All right, so hopefully everyone can hear me. We're going over the IAP formula, the intent. This is the roadmap for you. This guides that roadmap, which is the IAP formula. And some hint questions for you to discern your intent. Who? Who is the person you're going to be with? What might they want? And why are you there? Okay, so the intent is so important. A lot of people, I hear them saying, oh, I've got to give a PowerPoint next week. Okay, what's your intent for that? Oh, I just got to get through my deck. No, 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 no. You must have an intent. I want you to have either a general intent, for example, I want to educate everybody about our new 401k policy, or a specific intent. I'd like to get everyone in this room to donate $500. Do you see the difference between specific and general? Okay, But a good intent line will be short and sweet. It will be only a couple or a few words at most. If an and is creeping in, please trim. Get back in there and edit that intent line. You want a strong, strong action verb to guide your intent, to grow my business, to close this deal. Those are some examples using a strong action verb. Let's talk about audience analysis, or what I like to say, who are these people, right? So your helper questions for audience analysis in the IAP formula, who, there it is again, what, and where, where are you for this encounter, for this communication moment? The where is important because if you're at a happy hour, that's a different kind of setting and audience analysis that you're going to do compared with an evening gala 
or even a more seri serious morning prayer breakfast, for example, which may have your business colleagues at it. Okay, so the where is very important. It's important for you in this situation to think about what the needs are of the audience. Very important, and I'm going to get to that in a moment as to why that's so important. The audience analysis is so crucial, people, that I have an extra slide for it, and I break it down into the before, the during, and the after. When you are doing your audience analysis, all data points are important. We know uh, on this webinar line, many of you are University of Minnesota alumni. Some of you are not. That's okay. Welcome. We're glad you're here. We're happy gophers. But the bottom line is, if you can use that time to identify who the specific people are going to be or person in whatever communication encounter you have, the more on point you can be. Or as I like to say, Audience analysis is what separates the wannabes from the pros. Okay, Think about that for a moment. Are you a wannabe or are you truly an amazing pro? All data points are important. The before audience analysis is everything you do from now through the moment you walk into the door of your event or you pick up the phone for that call or you're getting ready to write that email. Every data point you can glean about that audience. You can find, I mean, we are in a world that is so rich in how to figure out uh, what it is your audience needs and, and wants. Okay? Go online. Look them up. There's LinkedIn. There are your own university and alumni resources. Acquaintances. Do colleagues know the person you're about to meet with or who you're trying to sell to? That will be good uh, to really ask those acquaintances, what do you know about the person I'm about to have this lunch with? I'm trying to get to know them. Eventually, I want to sell to them. Get all the data points you can. One funny anecdote I share about myself because it points this out, when I was a TV reporter, and chai became, chai tea lattes, became a big uh, thing at coffee shops, my photojournalists that I worked with, they soon came to learn that I loved a chai tea latte. Not only did I love it, it made me calmer, it made me happier if we were about to uh, uh, head into a real stressful afternoon. So they, on their own, would swing over to the Starbucks or whatever coffee shop was nearby and make sure I had that chai, chai tea latte in hand. That is a really uh, anecdotal and maybe sounding trivial piece of audience analysis, but that is a way that that was so important for them to figure out about me and it helped us do our job together. Okay, So you can figure this out from what, ha what is your past practice, past dealings with any of the people that you're about to meet with. Th those are also opportunities for your you to get data points for this before audience analysis that I'm talking about. The during audience analysis is really, really the crux of what separates the wannabes from the pros because in the during audience analysis, you are doing a combination of having to perform and deliver while you an analyze your audience. You're analyzing and assessing if they are receiving you well and if they're not you may have to adjust. In fact, you probably have to adjust if they are not receiving you well. So how do you do that? How do you go to plan B or plan C gracefully? Well, that during audience analysis is influenced by your before audience analysis. So if you know you are in a group of all University of Minnesota alumni, maybe how you can correct course is by sharing a gopher anecdote or something that you all have in common. Or perhaps you're all a bunch of bankers and some news just came out from the Fed and you're going to throw that piece of information or some data out or some joke about that uh, to get yourself back on course. So the key to the during audience analysis is while you are performing and communicating, you are also analyzing your audience. If everything's looking good and copacetic, you move forward with plan A. If it is not, 
you must adjust. So I'm, I'm really getting into this audience analysis piece, and I want to make sure people understand it. Uh, we'll get to the after, but I want to make sure if you have any questions, please, please give us these questions now, and I will answer them on the spot about anything about the IAP formula so far or the audience analysis in particular. Maybe you want to share something about uh, when audience analysis was off or something didn't uh, go so well and now you want to kind of get uh, dissected a little more. Let me know. I'm happy to answer those questions. So the key to during audience analysis is for you to make sure you're keeping that assessment of how you're being received and you're reacting to it. If it's going well, if they're laughing at your jokes, great. If they're not, maybe you should stop telling them. Okay. And another thing, I want to add humor because I happen to think I'm funny. If you're not funny, Plan B is not the time to use humor. Stick with your strengths, okay? If you're a data geek, then turn to some really interesting piece of data that just came out. Or if you're a scientist, wow us with some scientific knowledge. But if you're not funny, don't try to tell a joke at that point. The after audience analysis is kind of a combination, all right? It involves you and it involves your audience. First, it involves your audience. Is there a gratitude piece that needs to come in that after? So you've left, the encounter is over, the email is sent, the phone call has been had. Now, is there an after piece of gratitude? And I say in 99.9% .9 of the time, yes, there is. Add that gratitude in. Or did your audience ask for an additional piece of information? For example, today, if anyone wants this PowerPoint and the deck, you can get that. If uh, you missed the beginning of, of this session, you can go online and the UMAA is sending you that link, wants you to have that link. That's kind of that additional information that your audience has ahead of time. Uh, that's involved in, in the, the, that they may need after you're done. You need to get that to them. The other part of the after audience analysis is all about you. Reviewing, debriefing with yourself, with colleagues, uh, with a coach if you have a coach, with your boss, whatever the case is. So much can be accomplished in the after. Okay, so as I'm teaching you this IAP formula, I'm speaking generally. We're going to get into a couple specific examples based on that first go-to webinar question. So you can apply the IAP uh, in, in that kind of situation. All right, so I see we have a question from Elizabeth, is that right? Uh, her question is, what is your number one your most favorite question to ask in intentional connecting? Well, that's a really nice question, Elizabeth. And this is where I'm going to say, use your audience analysis first. Who is in front of you? There's not an, a one-size-fits-all, okay? I'm not a fan of that line, 30-second commercial or elevator pitch, because those seem to say one-size-fits-all. Intentional connecting is about making sure you are able to fashion or formulate how you communicate in precisely the way that audience in front of you needs it. So if you remember this, the intent is about you, but the powerful performance is always about your audience. So for instance, Elizabeth, if you see someone in front of you who is, let's say you're at a happy hour, who happens to be drinking a martini, maybe that first question you ask is, oh, is the martini your favorite drink? Now, this might sound trivial, but it is a way to customize that one-on-one -on -one encounter to, you know, literally break the ice over a martini. There's no better way to do it. And then it furthers the conversation. Maybe they say, no, I really like this, but they didn't have that, so I got a martini. And then that gets you into the conversation. So uh, I'm really trying to help you really become more intentional by seeing who is in front of you. All right, who is in front of you? And you try to fashion that first question accordingly. Now, if you don't know enough yet, you need a little more data before you have a real focused, intentional question. Some things you could say are about them. I, I like to avoid what do you do, what's your company. I like to look around you. Where are you? If you're at a, a, an art museum, why can't that first question be about some piece of art you're both in front of or something you want to see at that exhibit that day? Really customize to that setting. 
Okay, hopefully you understand the audience analysis. Keep sending in your questions if you want any clarification. Powerful performance is the P of the IAP formula. I have a couple sample questions there for you to think about. It's really the how. How do I now use my image, my vocal behavior, my body language, all the words that I'm going to say in this message, and remember what my intent is based on all the data points about my audience that I've gleaned in the before and maybe the during because you're at the event, how will you now choreograph a performance, a powerful performance to accomplish your intent? That is what the P, the powerful performance is all about, right? So that's what I want you to think about. How do I use my image and my vocal behavior and my messaging and my body language? Maybe there's a handout. How do I use all of those things? Very customized to the audience that I've done this research on and I've collected data points to now deliver a powerful performance. So that is what the powerful performance is about. And it is absolutely important that you make sure that powerful performance is about your audience. All right, we have a question coming in from Daniel. Thanks, Daniel. For the before, would you try to get a list of persons attending a given networking event so that you could do some homework in advance, their background, what they do, etc.? Absolutely yes, resoundingly yes. Daniel, I like where your brain is going here. If you can get a hold of that list, and sometimes it's easy to do, sometimes not, but let's say you know a certain business is hosting an event, you can go on their website, you can see who they're their leaders are. You can see who some of their uh, members are, some of the people who work there. But if you can get that list, absolutely. That list is like solid gold, let me tell you. Because ahead of time, if you spend even 20 minutes going down that list, writing yourself some notations about who you believe will be, you know, what you know about these people, maybe you'll find, wow, I know three of those people. Or my brother went to high school with that guy. I'm going to ask my brother more about that guy. Right? That is such a great question, and it is absolutely ex what I want you to be thinking of when we are talking about before audience analysis. And you know what? We've got so many tools at our disposal. There is no reason, folks, to be going to lunches, to benefits, to breakfasts, to, to meetings, to fundraisers, to any kind of event at which you want to network for your own business or your own personal lives, there is no reason to go unprepared. Just showing up, just winging it, 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 it's not intentional connecting. And so if you're not having the results you want, start by asking yourself, did I apply the IAP formula, but, but did I even prepare? Did I think about who's going to be there? All right. The powerful performance also involves is, am I wearing what's appropriate? Remember I asked you to find out where is the event going to be. If you're going to a restaurant versus a ballpark, it would look silly if you showed up at a ballpark in a three-piece suit and tie. Am I right? Yeah, I thought so. Unless you know everybody else is in that audience, and frankly, I need to talk to them because you can't go to a ballpark in a three-piece suit and tie. But dress accordingly, be comfortable, be respectful of who that audience is. The bottom line is you want to showcase you. So now we're going to talk about what I call the who are you moments, okay? The who are you moments. And we can apply the IAP formula in these who are you moments for multiple reasons. What are some of the goals of a who are you moment, all right? So possibly it's to establish credibility. Perhaps it's to build rapport. Maybe it's to meet a bunch of new people. That is perfectly fine. The point is you want to have an intent for those who are you moments. And to arm yourself for these short duration is kind of how I think of the who are you moments where you may have to do multiple introductions or it's a short duration setting. Maybe you get 20 seconds to two minutes with a number of people. Okay, the intent, ask yourself, who am I and what is my purpose? So that's not just what your title is, but who are you exactly? What do you bring to the table when you go to this event? And what is your purpose for being there? Okay, so that is really important to 
think about in these short duration settings. So ask yourself, these are the help hints questions for the intent line. Who am I? What is my purpose? And let me give you a sample intent line for one of these who are you networking events. 63% of you uh, answered the top range to those type of events, right? Think about wanting them to talk to you again. I want to get this person to talk with me again. Think about how simple that is. So that takes some pressure off of you. Maybe it's just being humorous uh, and getting them interested in you. Maybe it's, I want to be memorable. In this sea of bankers, and no offense to bankers, I love bankers, how can I get, how can I differentiate myself? How can I make people want to talk with me again? Okay, I uh, have some questions coming in. This one from Natasha. Natasha says, I am in sales and just had a great meeting with a new prospect. It seemed we connected well and they were interested in getting involved with my project. I, had I have followed up and now it seems that they have gone MIA, missing an action. What is the line between follow up and stalking? But Natasha, great question. You know, and this is where sometimes the passive aggressive nature of some Minnesotans doesn't help us, especially when you're in sales, you want an answer, you want a yes or a no. Go back to the audience analysis. What do you remember, Natasha, about this person? What were their likes? What were their dislikes? What were their challenges? Let's try your next communication to be more about that. Instead of just, hey, it's me, I'm out there, uh, get back to me, kind of, you know, I know you're not saying that exactly, but think through what was it? Do you remember, maybe, or maybe they had a kid who was getting married. Can you put that into your next follow-up and really make it short and sweet? And one of the best lessons I have gotten in sales is close to something. So don't leave that email open-ended. Based on the data points you know about them and what they told you and what they kind of agreed would be the next steps, write this or leave a voice message or write an email and close with something. So maybe you send this email, here it is today, October 15th. Maybe you send this email this afternoon and you say, if I don't hear from you by Monday, October 19th, I will follow up with a phone call. You know, so close to something. So it gives both of you a task and uh, also it gives some intent, right? And, and then it's one of those things. I mean, just the law of averages these days, it takes seven to 10 impressions before someone decides to buy or go with you or say yes. So sometimes it's also about just sticking with it. But I promise you, if you start using the IAP formula, you are going to have more focused results because you will have started with more focused preparation, okay? All right, let's talk about the audience analysis in these short duration settings. Ask yourself, who are these people and what is my message to them? I want to sh a share. I want to share a question that came in from Erica a couple days ago before we even had the webinar. Erica asked, "What kind of intentional connect connecting advice would you give to someone who has moved to a new city for a new job?" I like the question because. Erica is not necessarily in the beginning of her career, so it's not just about meeting new people, but it's really about, um, it is about meeting new people, but it's not just about furthering your career. It's actually also establishing some sort of life and lifestyle in that new city. Well, Erica, one of the things you can do is think about the audience analysis, and here we are. That's why I wanted to ask your question and put that out there on this slide. Who are the people that you might be around already and what is your message to them okay people love to talk about themselves people love to hear their own name all right so my recommendation to you is find some settings remember the where where are you all right and maybe your own apartment building or if you live in a house or, or townhome your own neighborhood those might be some settings where you can find some of these short duration conversations. Uh, I happen to be a runner, all right? 
I am part of a running team. And I can tell you, I only joined this running team in 2011. I wish during my reporting career when I lived in five different cities, including Minneapolis for a couple of years, that I had known about running teams. I didn't know they existed. Because every time I moved to a new city, I would have to make friends. And I loved people I worked with, but I also wanted to have friends outside of my TV stations. I wish I knew about running teams, right? Now I do. I have met so many amazing people through running teams. And you know what? Some of them have also become clients. So you just never know. If you start with your strength, that's why remember I said with your intent, who am I, well, who am I, and what do I know? All right, if you know running, or if you know cooking, or if you know knitting, or if you know golf, go to those locations. And at first it might be a little scary, right? But you have to let yourself get out there, all right? Get, let yourself get out there, all right? Uh, okay, uh, another person is, uh, oh, Mar Marty is suggesting something, a really great suggestion for you, Erica. I love it when our webinar participants have answers. Marty says, I would look to your alumni who live where you are. Excellent, excellent. So whatever city you are in, Erica, look to, if you are a U of M grad, look to the U of M alumni. If you went somewhere else, start with that alumni association. Really, really great advice. Thanks, Marty. So these are those questions for you. And uh, I want to share an example of audience analysis in my own life where I had to make sure I remembered my setting and who the people were and I adjusted accordingly. And this was more of an interactive, longer setting. It wasn't a short duration, but um, before I gave my interactive keynote with this group of attorneys, I was part of a dinner event the night before. And it was an opportunity to say kind of to myself, who are these people? How much more audience analysis can I get about them before I have to go and give this session the next morning. And we were in a resort setting. It was an interactive keynote I was going to give the next day. So I made sure I was data collecting even during dinner and cocktail time. So those are the kinds of things you can do. Don't ever turn that radar off, okay? All right, let's talk about the short duration settings and your powerful performance. How will you deliver? Let's remember, we're talking about the words we use, our body language, our image, our clothing, our vocal behavior, all of these things are part of that powerful performance. Also remember, the powerful performance is about your audience. It is not about you, it never is. And where people seem to not have the wow moments is when they make the performance about themselves and not about their audience. So do remember all those key data points you learned during your audience analysis and bring that into your powerful performance. And if you're in the setting and you're doing your during audience analysis, when you are taking them in and how they're reacting to you while you are performing, you can make those needed adjustments in your life. Okay. As any uh, questions are coming in, please uh, feel free to keep going with those. We'll take them live. But uh, now John has uh, another go-to webinar question for us. All right, one second here. And I believe this is the question about why do you want to meet new people? Is it for new business, family connections? job prospecting, or exploring a community. And we'll give uh, folks about 10 seconds here. And actually one thing as um, I'm thinking of it, um, Rashini had the great advice of connecting with other alumni. Uh, if you go to link, if you're on LinkedIn and do linkedin.com slash alumni, you're able to search by any college or university uh, that's on LinkedIn and search against their uh, others who list that university in their LinkedIn profile. And so that's a nice uh, tool as well. That is a great tool, John, and a nice little tip ahead of your LinkedIn webinar next yeah. week. Yeah. All right. Or in we'll, two weeks. We'll close the poll here and share it. And All so right. 
Uh, okay, so why do people want to meet new people? John, go go ahead, John. Okay, I'm just hiding one of my screens. Okay, uh, about over half of you, 52% uh, list job prospecting, uh, with about 26% saying exploring a new com uh, community, followed by new business, and a few uh, uh, listing family connections. So at least half, um, it's about job prospecting. Okay, great. Well, let me focus then uh, some of our marketing moments. Our next section of our webinar today is using the IAP in what I call marketing moments. This does not need to just be about money, but more than half of you uh, are job prospecting, so it actually is. The bottom line with using the IAP formula for marketing moments is to showcase your brand, okay? And your brand is really you. Remember, your personal brand is you. So definitely remember that as we go through uh, how we can use the IAP accordingly, okay? So marketing moments in the intent line. Again, who is this audience? What is my goal? For some of you, it's, okay, it's your first interview in a setting. Uh, hopefully, you will have done your audience analysis ahead of time. You found out who your interviewers are. You found out, you know, do they like chocolate? Trivial things to serious things. Who is that audience? It's so important. If you go in to an informational meeting for a job or an actual job interview and have and, and it's like you're asking them to tell them about you about the company that right there has killed you it's killed you right out of the gate so you got to prepare and really understand what is my goal this is really important if you're in a job setting and this can be whether you're job prospecting for a new job or promotion or you actually want new business you want new clients the same applies realize that that very first encounter is unlikely going to close the sale. I mean, if it does, I want you to email me because I want to talk to you, all right? It is so rare that that is going to happen. So remember, that first encounter might be just let them get to know me. Build rapport. My intent line, really short. Build credibility or build rapport or get them to want to help me. I mean, any of those things are appropriate intent lines for those first encounters, especially when you're job prospecting. All right, Wesley has a question. Thanks, Wesley. Wesley says, I'm looking for a job and I'm lucky enough to get a warm introduction to someone in my job area. How do I handle the initial phone conversation with someone I've never met? Okay, Wesley, really good question. I'm glad you're asking me now. Let's find out who they are. Okay, again, let's go back to the IAP formula. All the data points you can possibly get on that person who is going to uh, talk with you, okay? And who gave you the warm introduction? Ask that warm introducer, what does he or she know about this person you're about to talk with? So never go into a call like that without having done some of your homework. I don't know if there are any current students on the webinar right now, but one of the things that drives me crazy is when a client will ask if I'll talk to you know, their employee's child or a college student or high schooler or their high schooler or whatever, and that person reaches out to me and they're not prepared. They haven't looked me up. They haven't found out what, you know, the actual, to ask really in, intentional questions, right? Okay. Um, okay. Ivory has a question. I notice you're talking a lot about promoting yourself for business opportunities, but I work in nonprofit and I'm interested in expanding my network for collaboration to meet client needs. Do you have any advice, any advice on how to approach the situation? Absolutely, Ivory. And everything I've talked about applies to you. Just so you know, you have to sell yourself to these prospects when you're in a nonprofit setting. Nonprofit does not mean free. You've got to run on a budget too. Am I right, Ivory? Think about that for a moment. So either you're going out, and you can certainly uh, write a follow-up if you have a specific audience in mind so I can be more focused and customized for you. But how do you, what kind of homework have you done on all these people that you're going to be talking with? How do you sell that organization? I mean, are you trying to educate them about your nonprofit? Are you trying to get them to join your board? Are you trying to get them to be a, an ambassador? All of those things are ways you are trying to sell and promote the nonprofit. Okay, um, there was a question up a couple above that I want to make sure we got to. And it came in, uh, okay, Jason. 
Jason, I don't want to miss you. If you could give a young one, a young person, one piece of advice regarding connecting with new people, what would it be? Okay, there's going to be a couple pieces here. First of all, take a shower and look good. All right, it is never a good idea to be unkempt when you are trying to market yourself. And I say market, I lose use that term. It is not just about selling. Before you can sell, you have to market. You have to get people to believe in the Wesley brand or the Ivory brand. We need to remember that. The powerful performance is always about them. The intent is about us. So if you want that person with whom you have a warm introduction to like you, believe in you, help you, you that's your intent, but you now have to perform that phone call in a way that sells them on you, right? Really, really, really key. Okay, and I'm going to just switch slides really quickly so you see audience analysis. These are some of the helper questions. Who will see, read, or hear this message? Who will see you? Who will be at the receiver of the information? Those are the kinds of things you have to ask yourself when you're in these different marketing moments. Now, marketing moments can involve networking events. They can involve when your company is putting something on. It could be a panel you go to to network in the nonprofit community. All of those things I want you to start thinking about as marketing moments. Okay. Elizabeth has a question. Thanks, Elizabeth. Those who are job prospecting, the question I have found powerful and put the focus on the other person they are trying to connect with. Absolutely. Uh, and Elizabeth asks, what was your first job? It has built rapport. So that's the question she's suggesting. What was your first job? People always say, fun question. It even allows them to think about where they have started in their own life and how they have gotten to where they are now. I suggest encourage all people who are seeking to make a career move to use the question, what was your very first position? That's really great. I love it. It actually makes me kind of think, and those of us in the room here, what was that very first position? It wasn't my first TV reporting job, but this dates back to maybe 14, 15 years old. What was the first thing I got paid to do in a job kind of setting? Okay, let's move on to that powerful performance slide when it comes to marketing moments. This is using that IAP formula now, how do you put it all together for the powerful performance? How will you connect? How will you wow people? Those are the kinds of things to think about. Okay, uh, Marnie has a question for us. I can talk to anyone. I just find it hard to know the words to use and not use in a mixed setting like a networking event. Wonderful question. This is also where you can pull a couple things into play, Marnie. If you're able to get a list of who's all going to be there ahead of time, do that, study that, try to earmark, identify, highlight two to five people you want to specifically seek out and chat with because maybe you have something in common, maybe they are someone who uh, has something you want or something you have that they want, whatever it is, identify those people if you can ahead of time. The other is what I call that quick muscle IAP. The IAP formula is meant to be used for short duration, long duration, everything in between you can assess someone right on the spot. It's actually a really good game to play with yourself. Okay, so you see these two people talking in the corner, one's wearing uh, bell bottoms, one's wearing a three-piece suit. Maybe that alone gives you some audience analysis details to uh, go over to them. Okay, Randy has a question. How do you really know what you should ask in these calls? Okay, Randy, I might need a little more detail, but again, in, in these calls, if you're talking about job prospecting, if you are speaking to someone who works, let's say, at Target, and you know that Target has these five openings, and you know you're qualified for at least two of them, maybe three, that's the prep that you've put in. And if the person you're jumping on the phone call with or the coffee meeting is connected to one of those three positions or target in general and is connected to all five, you now have really all you need to ask some of the right questions. Try to go beyond just asking basic questions because if you've read the job descriptions, you should have some information. So pull from their own words, pull from the company's own job description to formulate your powerful performance. How will I connect or wow them? Will you wow them by showing them you've prepared for the call, right? If someone's going to donate their time, which is what they're doing, if they are either interviewing you 
or giving you an informational meeting. You better show up ready to show some gratitude and also show that you're prepared. If you're not ready, if you've had a bad day and, and it's not rude, like you're not canceling on them the very day, don't schedule that meeting until you're ready to show up with a great smile on your face with some really thoughtful questions and things like that. Okay. Andrea has a question. When making connections at these events, how do we continuously strategize, as you're suggest suggesting, without coming across as ingenuine? Well, you know, Andrea, I don't want this to be like, you know, the Department of Defense. We're not talking about that detailed kind of strategy. Some of it is, it's more intentionality. That's the word I like to use. So if you've just met someone who works at, let's say, a restaurant that you love, okay? Maybe they're in the catering manager at, I'll say, a restaurant here in the Twin Cities area, Crave. Maybe they're a catering manager at Crave, all right? If you are connecting with them and your world has nothing to do with what they do, but you've just found out they're a mother of a five-year-old and you're the mother of a four-year-old, maybe that's now your bond. Because in those short duration conversations in networking events, it is not really first and foremost about getting the job. It's about getting people to like you, getting people to think you're credible. If they remember that your kid goes to their same school, then when you call two weeks or two months later or two years later, that's something in common that you might have, all right? And if you assess the person in front of you at these networking events, you know, is not someone you want to continue the conversation with, that is absolutely fine. Don't keep asking questions. Find a nice, graceful way to exit the conversation. All right. Joshua has a fabulous question. Do you have any specific tips for introverts to network effectively or for others to engage introverts? I have a soft spot for this one because I am dating an introvert and I feel like I have a little extra expertise in this area. Introverts, and I'm not, I don't want to be too generic, but they're thoughtful people. They can absolutely knock your socks off, all right? So don't think the extroverts have the game when it comes to showcasing themselves. But what I do want you to remember is thoughtfulness is important. So go back, Joshua, to that same audience analysis. Find out whatever you can. And if you didn't know them ahead of time, so you did a bunch of pre-prep, you know, preparation ahead of this event, but you're learning just right on the spot about who they are, try to continue to make that conversation about them. Get them to expand the conversation. What I also find about introverts is social settings really drain them of energy. So if you are in a big social event, try to move over to a more secluded area or a place where you can at least hear each other. Try to make that introvert really comfortable, okay? So that's my advice for the introverted uh, person, for the introvert setting. And um, I, want, uh, I want John to ask, I think we have one more go-to webinar question. John, if you want to put that one up, please. Okay, how would you rate your ability with meeting new people? Excellent, good, fair, or abysmal? So take a few seconds here and uh, fill this one out. Right, and the results are, okay, about, um, okay, 47% say good, only 13% excellent, and nearly 40% say mostly fair, but 7% uh, abysmal as well. So it's a mix of uh, confidence and then also some uh, areas of uh, self-improvement that people are identifying as well. Yeah, John, I love that 60%, if we total the excellent and the good, we come up with 60% if my numbers are right. That is really wonderful to hear. So well over 50% of you out there feel good or excellent about meeting new people. People, that is power. If you are good or excellent at meeting new people, now I want that, that group to take 
the IAP formula and just be far more intentional. Now, those of you who put yourself in the fair or the abysmal category, I'm sending you, uh, an, uh, uh, what is it called, an, a hug. I'm sending you a hug over the webinar, webinar airwaves here because probably you're not abysmal, but you just think that. So, so much of how we communicate and how we have powerful communication settings and results is, starts from the inside. In fact, 100% of it starts with what I call self-perception, okay? So when your self-perception is off, then you are not going to wow. You are not going to get the intentional result you want. So before you say yes to that next networking setting, those of you who put yourself in the fair and the abysmal, I want you to ask yourself, what's going on inside? Am I ready to go out and meet people today? Am I high on life or am I down on life? Because if I'm down on life, today is not the day to go to a networking setting where there may be 200 people. Because we're just, we're all human, right? It's okay if that's not the day. I have days, I'm a professional communicator. I have days where I say, this is a day that's an office day. I should not communicate with another human, at least by voice, maybe by email. It's okay if I say that. The key is the self-perception, the self-awareness that I'm now going to move into how do I deal with that on that day, okay? We don't always get to choose. Sometimes we have meetings, sometimes we have uh, performances, whatever, and we don't get to choose, so we have to pull it together. But do remember that it starts with self-perception. So if it's a rough day, call a friend that you trust. Call someone uh, that makes you feel better about yourself. Or for me, it's my chai tea latte. That's my happy place. I go try to grab a paper, get my chai tea latte, sit there without work or emails, read through the paper, drink my chai. Whatever it is that you need to do to move your own barometric pressure into a really good zone, your own self thermometer into a great, comfortable setting for you. That's what I would say. First, get yourself pumped up. Uh, take a shower if you're going to go out and see other people. All right. I don't care if you want to do grunge, do grunge, but do it well. Start with a shower, okay? <laughs> look good, looking good. When you look good on the outside, no matter what that means, healthy, clean, uh, in a tailored outfit, when you look good on the outside, people react well. And that will start to send some of the outside uh, energy towards you and lift the spirits. But it really does start with our inside, what's going on in our self-perception. Okay, Wendy has a question. Wendy says, I know networking is important, and so I want to make a good impression. However, as a person at the beginning of my career, I am often not sure exactly what I'm looking for, and I am networking to explore, so I do not have extremely specific questions. How can I let my networking feel organic while not seeming unprepared? Wendy, I love it. Organic, that's what we want. So your intent could be as simple and productive as, I want to meet three new people today. So low pressure, three new people, no agenda, just I want to meet three new people. Maybe have a fun time, or I want to go, I, in fact, I'm going to a gala event tonight. A friend of mine invited me, uh, she invited me a couple months ago when I had nothing on my calendar for October. I said, yes, I'm going tonight because I'm holding up that commitment. I'm going to be at a table with her, one other person I know, and eight other strangers, okay, plus in a room full of people that I may or may not know. The bottom line is I'm going to make sure I'm dressed appropriately for the gala. I'm going to make sure I have my business cards just in case someone wants to contact me later. But my intent for tonight is to support her in her role on this board and letting me say hi, letting me be at her table. Underlying, underlying theme there is to have fun. So if nothing else tonight, I know that I have a high quotient and my ability for having fun is pretty darn good. And the person who invited me to this is someone I have a lot of fun with. So I know just from the get-go that I'll probably accomplish my intent tonight. Anything else will be a bonus. So Wendy, as you're going to these different things, just try to have some fun. Maybe the intent is to get this person to want to have coffee with me later, no matter what we talk about. I don't know. You have to make that decision on what your intent line is going to be. Okay. In 
the big picture when we're talking about marketing moments, and I'm saying any kind of place where you are showing up people, I mean, other than walking your dog or whatever you might do with your cat, I'm a dog person, um, you're marketing yourself. I don't care. I mean, when you go to the grocery store, if you bump into someone who, you know, maybe wants to hire you or could hire you, you're marketing yourself. So the big picture is that you have to do the showcasing. But I'm saying do it authentically and do it with intention. You see a picture of Robert, one of the sharks from ABC's Shark Tank. I happened to be at an event that Deluxe Corporation put on on September 30th. You see their logo of their Small Business Revolution. This is their 100 year anniversary. And instead of just making the party about themselves, guess what? They decided to do their powerful performance outward. They made it about 100 small business owners all over the country. And they went around, they first solicited uh, votes and, and all these kinds of things, and people who nominated, people got prizes. Anyway, 100 different businesses, about eight of them in Minnesota, all over, Chicago, Arkansas, you name it, it was covered. Uh, all different kinds of businesses. Uh, and there, there were pictures, there was a website, there was a whole social media campaign all throughout the year that their chief marketing officer, Amanda Brinkman, it's her brainchild, put on. But she made it. Her intent, the Deluxe's intent, was to celebrate 100 years. Their powerful performance was out to their audience. They made it about those 100 small business owners. They made it about the people around them and who have been part of Deluxe's success. So on September 30th, they had the premiere of a documentary that featured some of those business owners. It was the big culmination of this celebration that's, that really started, I want to say, February or March of this year. And the brainchild, uh, Amanda, had been thinking about it far longer than that. So they knew what to do. The shark, Robert, who was, one, was their national spokesperson. Okay, he was their national spokesperson. He and Amanda did national television interviews on Good Morning America, on other outlets all over, print, TV, radio, they were there. That was part of the performance. That was part of that intentional use of the IAP formula. And they brought Robert to the premiere on September 30th. So the crowd at Aria in downtown Minneapolis got to see him. There was a short program they introduced the film, it was wonderful, and that brand is everywhere around the Twin Cities. If you've been driving around, if you're local, you see billboards with that Small Business Re Revolution logo, all right? This is on this slide because it was such a fabulous use of the IAP formula. Their powerful performance, it, hit, it was hit out of the park, so I give them 10 points, high stars, uh, as many points as you can get, uh, which is so important. Real quick question from Anthony I want to get in before we have to say goodbye. After a networking event, do you follow up with everyone you talked with or just future prospects? You know, Anthony, that's really a personal choice. I know there are a lot of people who follow up with everybody. Uh, you know, I, I mean, even if it, I, it can't hurt you to follow up with everyone, if you have that kind of time. Definitely follow up with anyone who said they wanted to talk with you or you want to follow up with. And then it's really up to you based on your calendar, your schedule. Can you follow up with everyone? It, it certainly is not going to hurt you. I think it's good for your brand. If, But make sure, powerful performance on that email, if you choose to do an email or a thank you note, make sure it's grammatically correct, make sure it's very clear, and tie back into what you talked about with that person. Okay, so I want to wind down with reminding you the brain is there for intention spark hopefully today's webinar which has been so wonderful being with you all sparks your brain synopsis to think about how can I go to that usual lunch that I go to every month how can I go to those happy hours that I'm always going to or various social and business functions and use the IAP formula both on site and in preparation for those moments so this hopefully is now the beginning of a much more powerful and wow-filled communication life for you. We are always happy to hear from you. There's a lot of complimentary content on my website, ownyourwow.com. We're very intentional with that website. There's a blog. There's uh, the archive of my columns with Twin City Business Magazine. Also, we launched our new website two weeks ago, 
very intentional with the ownyourwow.com site. Would love to hear your feedback about the site. So call or email us. And thank you so much for spending your hour with us. Thanks, John and Aaron and Sarah for planning everything over here at the UMAA. And uh, make it a really, really great month, everybody. Thank you so much, Rashini. And, and I uh, definitely have to uh, second as far as if you have a, a moment to uh, to check out our website and a lot of the content. And actually, the, the kernel of this webinar today uh, was based off of reading one of her columns in the, is it the Twin Cities Business? Uh, Twin, yeah, magazine? Twin Cities Business, yep. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. So uh, just wonderful. And, and thank you so much for sharing uh, your time and talent with us today, Rashini. Thank you, John. All right, everybody. Uh, that's another uh, great webinar in the books. Uh, just have a, a few um, a few things to show on the way out here. Uh, we will have some more uh, webinars uh, coming up on December 3 uh, with our colleagues at College of a Continuing Education on becoming a persuasive business storyteller. And then also on December 17th, uh, alumnus Jack Brewer will be talking about power principles for creating effective, efficient teams. So uh, definitely check those out as well. And again, November 5th, 12 noon. Hey, let's put some of these networking uh, tips together. Only this one's going to be all virtual. So again, check it out. Uh, Z.umn.edu slash NOV5 virtual. Uh, it's a lot shorter vanity URL than the, the longer uh, URL. So again, check that one out as well. Uh, if you're on social media, find us on Twitter. We have lots of great LinkedIn groups. Our LinkedIn group for the Alumni Association is 30,000 members. It's another great way to find people in your industry, people in your geographic uh, region too, if you're uh, not here in the Twin Cities. And just lastly, uh, we do want to thank uh, members of the University of Minnesota Alumni Association who make initiatives like this webinar series possible. Thank you so much. Uh, because of members, we can enrich the lives of alumni, support student success, and make a better University of Minnesota. So become a member today at minnesotaalumni.org slash join. And that's all for the webinar today. Thank you for joining us and being an active and engaged member of our U of M alumni community. It's great to have so many of you, over 200 of you, on the webinar today. So have a great day.